Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy, Andrew G. And welcome to episode 13 of my podcast, The Public Affair. Episode 13, can you freaking believe that? Yes, I love it so much. And it's all because of everybody's support, everything down to the sponsors, to the audience, to my producer, my Hamilton at Rogue Media Network. You guys are the best and I appreciate it. Um, everybody that's giving me such positive feedback and some of the negative feedback, I appreciate everything because that's what we do in the public affair. <laughs> so before we get started with my uh, special guest for today, I want to give um, a shout out to a few of our sponsors that are making this episode possible. Um, let's start with Fat Boy Micheladas in Potana and Serrano Scarnita, uh, Junior Banda Miguel Serrano. Thank you so much for sponsoring. They work together to bring you the best Micheladas, Botana and Carne Seca that you'll ever have. Been having them a lot lately. So delicious. They're locally operated. You can call them for parties, get togethers, or if you just want something for yourself, totally hit them up. Uh, make sure you get the best and not the rest. I want to give a shout out to Cool Dream Services. Ashley and David Sanchez, thank you so much. They're a local heating and AC company. Then they also specialize in spray foam and so if you guys need any HVAC work done, you already know to call my people at Cool Dream Services. They're Cool Dreams Waco on Facebook, so make sure you give them a follow and call them on the number of the screen if you need them. Um, my boy Ziad Halavi with Cedar Sphere Digital Marketing. Um, thank you so much for sponsoring the public affair as well, Ziad. You're the best. Um, if you guys are starting a business from the ground up and you need some digital marketing done, you already know you got to hit up my boy Ziad with Cedar Sphere on the number on the screen and call him for all your digital marketing needs. He's the best, I'm telling you. Um, I want to give a shout out to our John Painting or our Painting, Si habla Español. My boy Juan Arjón, ¿cómo está? <laughs> He's a local family-owned company, um, over 35 years in business, and they specialize in residential and commercial homes, both interior and exterior, best quality guaranteed, and they're going to offer you a pretty sweet warranty as well, so make sure you give Juan Arjon with Arjon Painting a call on the number on the screen. Um, and I want to give a shout-out to one of my new sponsors, um, Mr. Frank Baiza with B&J Refinishing. Um, him and I have been talking about sponsorship for quite a while. Um, he just got on board, and I want to thank you so much, Frank. You're the best. Um, so basically what the uh, B&J Refinishing focuses on is resurfacing bathtubs, uh, counters, sinks, tiles, etc. to original showroom quality. They offer a five-year warranty on most work and they have the best prices in town so they're not going to break the pockets. He's going to save you some money. Frank, thank you for sponsoring the public affair. You're the best, man. Love you. Uh, more to come later. So, um, on episode 13, I've got a really cool guy that I can't wait to introduce you. I've known him for a really long time. I want to give a big shout out to my boy, Jose Garcia, a.k.a. DJ Monster. What's going on, man? What's up, man? How, How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, man, I'm great. And, uh, isn't he hot? <laughs> you know what, I'm going to tell the story about how we first met because hey, it was yo. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> But um, no, um, I really want to thank you for coming. It's, it was short notice. I think I only told you a couple days ago. Days ago yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah. I had some other people um, had something come up. Uh, so we're going to reschedule them for a later day. And I had you on the list of people to invite. And so I was like, let me see what my size is. You're not doing nothing on Saturday. It's yeah, for sure. I'm so happy that you came no, through. It's an um, honor, man. It's an honor. It's no, I mean, we, we go back. It's been a few years. Um, I've known you as a really cool DJ in town. I'm, I know a lot of great DJs from radio, and I, I will say that you were one of the kinder ones <laughs> that I had, <laughs> um, you know. And so um, I'm really happy that you're here. Now, you know I wine and dine all my guests, and Jose was simple in his request, and I've never had Eskimo Hut. Um, but he wanted a purple haze yeah, from Eskimo. Yeah. Are you going to open that or am I going to drink this by myself? Yeah, I mean, uh, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> and why did you want this as your amenity, Jose? This one right here, man, It's I like the way it tastes, man. It's mm. not too strong. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good vibe. Yo, I put an extra shot in it and you can taste it. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, I need to not drink that whole thing because I have radio later and then I don't want to be drunk on the air. My boss will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> How is that? Let's cheers. How about we cheers? Ooh, cheers Thank you for man. coming hey, on man. to the public affair. I'm so Thanks, happy man. that you're here. Man. I'm really awesome. Um, before we get started about who you are and stuff, I want to talk about how we first met. Um, I used to add random people on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody, right? <laughs> I would add random people on Facebook because I was working at Power 108, so I kind of wanted to market my name. And I guess you were just one of the randos. And um, I think you made a post about a video game or something. And then I was, yeah, something, I don't know, something like that. It was a Super Nintendo or something. Yeah. And um, I think I slid in the DMs and I was like, oh, I like Super Nintendo too. No homo. I was just like really just sliding <laughs> in the DMs, yeah. right? And so um, I was like, hey, and then I saw on your Facebook post um, that your life consisted of working out tacos and Chinese food. Yes. Am I Damn. right? Wow. I, I, yeah. Yo, you, yo, wow. nothing gets past me. Do you hear me? You got good memory, I, I do. Yes. I tell everybody, I don't use illicit drugs. I don't smoke weed. I barely drink. I, I was, although on every episode, except like three of the public <laughs> affair, I've had drinks. But I remember every fucking nothing gets past me and so i was like oh he likes chinese food where did we go <clears throat> happy, happy walk. walk that's happy right shout walk. out to happy walk best chinese in town don't at me happy don't walk. at me yo mei ling over there <laughs> killing it open? 
Um, I don't. I'm sure they are. I haven't, actually the last time I went there was whenever I went with you that one day. Are you so? It's been that long. It's been that long. You're missing out because I think they. I thought they shut down for a little well, bit. Well, when the crisis was happening in town, they shut they shut down for a little bit, kind of get their shit together, opened right back up for this opportunity they got. Yo, I love Happy Walk. So that's where we first had our first like in person interaction, yeah. and we talked a lot about your DJing, and we talked a lot about other things. I probably shouldn't remember. Really. <laughs> keep it between us. Keep it between, oh, yeah, yeah, keep you, it between tag, us. you tagged it. You tagged it. Yes, keep it between <laughs> us. But um, no, it was it was really great to meet you. And so ever since then, I feel like um, we've I feel like we've gotten a really close relationship as Thanks, friends. Man, and I, I, even though we don't see each other often, but I really do consider you one of my friends. So thank I do you, too, man. You, I, hey, man. First, I want to thank you for you know, you you were were still there for me whenever my mom passed. Oh yeah. yeah you know, whenever you would check up on me, man. Everyone uh-huh. that checked up on me. Yeah. Just like say nothing gets passed, but same here, man. I oh. remember every single person that was there for me, uh-huh. you know, texting me, calling me. Of course, that only lasted for two weeks, yeah. which is a normal thing. Right. But, I, I mean, you're, you're in my top people of friends that I care oh. about. Well, man. thank so, you, man. I appreciate you're that. Good, you're a good guy, I, man. I couldn't have imagined what it was. I mean, and, and I do want to talk about that a little later, <laughs> um, if that's okay with you. But I, I couldn't have imagined what it was like seeing you go through that. And um, I just... I'm a caring person. Yeah, man. Contrary I, to belief. I really appreciate <laughs> of course. You know, good friendships and yes. <laughs> you know, that, loyal friends, man. I really I, that's what that. I am, 100. That's all I, that's all I, I do. But yeah, that. I genuinely cared about what you were going through, so that's why appreciate I kept that. It's just my nature. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, it is. Like I said, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a good guy. Yes, good thank guy. you. Okay, good friend, well, good guy. I appreciate you, man. Well, look, let's get started. Um, for everybody who doesn't know who Jose Garcia is or DJ Monster, why don't you tell us who you are and what life was growing up for you like and um, like where you're from and all that. <clears throat> That's going to be a long story. Uh, well, <laughs> well, yeah, my name is uh, Jose Garcia. Uh, uh-huh. I was actually born in Mexico. Um, I came here when I was 9, 10. What part of Mexico? Uh, San Luis. Oh, I'm banned from there. Rio- <laughs> you oh. are? <laughs> what? <laughs> from Damian. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> uh, That's where I'm yeah. from, man. Uh, growing up, uh, oh, you know, <clears throat> the reason why we decided to come over here, you know, my mom made that choice of, you got tired of poverty, you know, yeah. you got tired of uh, seeing if we were going to get fed right. the same night. So one day, literally, man, even within one week, she made a choice to just pack everything up and said, oh, we're going to the U.S. And oh, originally, wow. we were going to move to uh, Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, we were going to move to uh, Athens. Okay. Not Atlanta, Athens. And, um, yeah, we came here and uh, we ended up, <clears throat> can, yeah, I think I was, I think I was right about 10 when I came here, man. And it was right. uh, you know, from Mexico to here, the language barrier, everything was really? different, crazy, different culture. And uh, remind me how old you were again? I was, I want to say I was 10. ten. Oh, I was that long? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. No, I had no old. idea. Okay. Yeah, I was wow. 10 years old. Uh, yeah. And we, uh, it, man, my first day of school here was just <laughs> fun to say the least. But <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Okay. But, but just, it was. Go ahead. <clears throat> I was, you know, lost because, you know, it was just a different everything. Right. Mexico, you go to class, it's one classroom, one teacher over mm-hmm. here. You have period one, two, three, through eight, whatever. And uh, I remember the first day, me and my cousin, Luis, we went to our class. Yeah. Bell rang at like 9, 30 or 10, I think. And right. we were thinking like, school's done? So we were walking out of school and security <laughs> guard's like, hey, man, hey, where, where y'all going? Yeah. And we didn't know what he was saying, so we just turned around, and the security guard happened to be Mexican, and so we spoke Spanish to us. He's yeah. like, well, where's your schedule? And I yeah. was like, right here. So, you know, everything was in Spanish, but uh, he's like, no, look, you guys are supposed to go to first period, this class, this, oh, room, this time. So it, it was just different. different. Yeah, everything okay. was all different, man, but it was fun, you know. And uh, besides that, man, growing up, you know, it was just, it was, uh, it was tough. It was okay. tough love. You know, yeah. It, it made me who I am. How long did it take you to learn English? Three months. Oh, that was quick. Three months. Smart ass. Uh, <laughs> three months, man. Uh, yeah. I was in the ESL class. and uh, Well, luckily, man, all my friends that I had, they all spoke Spanish and English. Okay. So I would speak to them in English, and they would talk back to me in Spanish. In Spanish. Oh, okay. Because I would try to, you know. Kinda, That's how you learn. Yeah. That's how you learn, yeah. So uh, it took me about, I want to say it took me about three months to master just kind of like the basic mm-hmm. thing. But, uh, and I kind of lost my my uh, accent. Maybe six months after that, probably. Oh, really? You just become Americanized. Oh, okay. Because right? you're around people that speak English. Yeah. And everything's different, man. But see, I love it. And uh, yeah, it, it's just a learning experience. You know, when I moved to uh, Miami from um, from New York, they were going to put my ass in ESL because I did not speak Spanish at I the didn't? time. Yeah, because everybody there was Cuban and they all spoke Spanish. Oh, and he was yeah. like, do you want to be in ESL? Or I forgot what he called it. But I, I was to learn Spanish. Well, he was just like, well, because you don't speak Spanish. 
And I was like, you know, it's crazy. No. We, I was we, like, no. We went to Miami, and I think yeah. 90% of the popular, or 90% of the people that we talked to all spoke Spanish. Oh, really? I mean, it was, I mean, Colombians, Cubans, yeah. Dominicans. And everyone spoke Spanish. Everywhere. They all speak Spanish. Every everywhere. single person over there. And I spoke zero. I used to speak Spanish now. Yeah. But I, I spoke zero Spanish. And I know what the hell. The lunch ladies, nothing. The teachers. We were doing vocabulary words in math class. I was like, what does <laughs> that doesn't even make no fucking sense? She's like, define parallel. I was like, I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> what about what two times two is? Bitch, you don't know that. This is English. Damn, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It was, it's a different world. But, uh, wow, that's, so that's pretty crazy. I had no idea that you're... you're if it's okay to share, did your family immigrate here? Or? Yeah. Okay. Those, man. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Those. So what? Do you remember that experience? Yeah, or? yeah, man. I remember like it was yesterday. Was it like? Was it what they? I don't know what that's like because I guess in New York we didn't have a lot of immigration per se. Um, I mean, as far as people crossing a yeah. border, I mean, because you know, whatever. Um, can you talk about what that experience yeah, they, was like? Yeah. They, we got drove across the border. Oh really? Yeah. Let me <clears throat> let me tell you something. That shit, I, and I'm sure it was hard. But when I went to Mexico and I was coming back, I feel like I could have brought somebody with me because the guy was like, just go. Yeah. Just fucking go. <laughs> like, yeah. I think I was talking too much. It's not, it looked easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, so somebody drove you through? Like, yeah, did you came, know? We came here legally, though. We, we, oh. just, we just drove through the border. But yeah, like you said, oh, okay. all they do is just ask you, are you a man? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. He was like, he was like, who? I was with the, um, the guy I was friends with at the time. He was like, um, so what do y'all do? And I was like, well, I'm Andrew G with Power 108. And, you know, Waco, Texas, number one hit music station. And this and, that, and he cuts grass. And this and that. And he's like, just, just fucking go. Like, <laughs> I was like, yo, we could have brought a dog. We could have brought a kid. We could have brought a family. Like, they didn't check us. Nothing. So well, border, back then was different. Back, yeah, I'm sure back then was different. But, like, two years ago, it wasn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so, uh, I think everything uh, changed after 9-11, really. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember, I remember just seeing the Border Patrol guy. Mm-hmm. Asking for an ID. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Kids, go. Wow, really? It was, it was that quick. How, how was the process legalizing you, though? Like, was that a long time? or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Very long time. Yeah, yeah, because my friend had to bring his wife over here from Mexico and legalize her, and that shit was like a whole process and so much money, and like when we take a picture, we have to go like this, and we can't smile. <laughs> yeah, right? And I was like, oh, I'd, let's invite her to a wedding, and we can just bring her over here. <laughs> Fuck that. Like, that, no, this is too much. And a lot of money. No, it's a lot. A lot of people yeah, don't, don't realize it's a lot of money. Yeah. Of money. And that's why I'm, I'm uh, this is controversial, but I'm so for immigration, because like a, a lot of people are not fortunate to have those resources. And um, if you're going to come over here and you're going to you know work your ass off like every other buddy does and you know take care of your family i'm so for that like that's just, just me don't hate me you know, i'm just saying you to come over here be a good citizen yeah pay your taxes pay your taxes and stay out of trouble that's it right <clears throat> that's it but that's like everybody like yeah. just stay your ass out of trouble you'll be fine like, I mean, some people ain't that smart no know? they're not you know, they're, they're not, not but we're not gonna talk about that just yeah. net just not yet <laughs> not yet <laughs> okay so um so wow it only took you that long to learn english and um where'd you go to school high school so i went to tennyson <clears throat> actually mm. skipped the sixth grade went straight to seventh because uh, you learned English or? Well, my mom didn't <laughs> think we were ready to go uh, to school because of the whole culture thing. Yeah. So we were actually, uh, we just stayed home for a whole year, man. And actually, I would just watch movies. Maybe that's the reason why it didn't take me that long okay. to learn English. Because right. I was just watching movies, listening to music. Yeah. <clears throat> listen to other people talk. Right. Um, so I guess that's why it didn't take me that long. But yeah, it took me about three three, uh, three years, I mean, three months to Learning. Was there particular music that you listened to that inspired you to teach, like learn English? Like who were you listening to? Ninety seven point five. So anything really? that was on that <laughs> Smash Mouth. Why are you pointing at me like I don't even work there? <laughs> no, because <laughs> you work at a radio. I work at a ninety seven five. No, <laughs> shout uh, out to ninety seven five. I had I don't this little <laughs> black little radio man that I would sleep with. I mean, I would. It, it was like mini boombox that mm -hmm. I would just carry with me. And like I said, this is the reason why my DJ I love music. Yeah, uh, I would carry this boombox with me. It was always on ninety seven point five. Right, Smash Mouth. Will Smith, oh. um, Cheryl Crow, stuff like that. You know, okay. Uh, even the Backstreet Boys, in sync. Okay. Stuff that uh, you wouldn't NSYNC, claim NSYNC. back then that you listen to. I actually did listen well, to. Ever, now, everybody's guilty pleasure, right? Now I'm just like, I don't give a, <laughs> I don't give a fuck, <laughs> right? Yo, bye 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 comes out in the club. That's my shit. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Nah, yeah. I'll sing it. Okay, yeah, Put I'll dance. Every, I got the whole fucking thing, like the, the choreography, everything down. Like I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what song taught me to um, learn Spanish was a song called um, La Tortura by Shakira and Alejandro Sanz. Um, it came out um, when I was, it's like in 2005, because when we moved to Miami, it came out. Old, yeah, it's an old song, song, and I wanted to know what she was saying, because yeah. that video was hot with the oil pouring down she's her. And she, she's, she is fine. <laughs> I wanted the oil pouring down me, too, but I guess it wouldn't look as good as me as it does on Shakira. <laughs> and so, yeah, I wanted to know what they were saying, so I would read the lyrics 
on um the the paper that I bought the CD on, and um I would just like listen to the song over and over and read the lyrics and like try to define the words and yeah. nice now I love Spanish. I would just <laughs> I would just listen to the songs. I mean I wouldn't look up lyrics or anything like that. Right. I would just listen to it. And I think the more I listened to it, yeah, the more I talked to people. I just that was. And back then, I was stupid shy, man. I wouldn't even talk to Oh, nobody. really? Yeah, I wouldn't talk to anybody. I wouldn't never guess that now. Never. Yeah. yeah. People, that's crazy because people from high school. Yeah. I was so shy, man. I, I hated talking in front of class. I mm-hmm. hated reading a paragraph. I hated having to read a paper. Right. Uh, now that I'm a DJ, they're like, you know, <laughs> from bad to now, it's like, wow. But, right. Uh, but yeah, going back to my school, uh, I went to AJ Moore. I uh, graduated class of 2004. Oh. Top 10%. Proud ah. right of that. Oh. It was a little bit of school. Pop your collar. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of school. But, uh, oh, uh, you said A.J. Moore? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, unpop his collar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to A.J. Moore. Yeah, Shout out to A.J. Moore. It doesn't I'm, exist I'm, anymore. Well, I think it doesn't, they right? still exist anymore. It's just at university. I think I slept with somebody who went to A.J. Moore, too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Shut up. I'm sorry. I was like, oh, dude, okay. gonna say something. Okay. No, you can say whatever you want. It's the public affair. Say it. <laughs> no, I was gonna say. I, I was. I was thinking. Of it wasn't. It wasn't Jose. It no, was it somebody. No, no was Jose's thinking. not gay. Okay, <laughs> but we're just really cool like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, um. Yeah. Uh, 2004. Uh huh. Then I went to uh, TACC, MCC. Oh wow. Took a few classes at Baylor. I couldn't afford it. Psh, right. So, what's their What's their tuition? Like thirty thousand something like that. Now. No, or when back then? Well, back then, no. Yeah. Back then, it was back in two thousand nine. I want to say to lock in tuition, it was like twelve thousand five hundred. <laughs> uh, and that Jesus. was just for tuition. You still have to pay for books. Yeah, park, parking tickets like three hundred dollars. I don't know how much it is now. Okay, but I'm sure it's expensive. It so, uh, hey, but that's so great that you. I mean, you you migrate here from a different. You don't know the language, and then you obviously. I mean, you took some classes at Baylor. I think that's pretty. You know, outstanding. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's. I wish I. I mean, I wish I could have finished, but. No, that's just expensive. What are you talking about? Fortunately, monetary yeah. wise, you know, I, I wasn't. Yo, sleep with some of your classmates. Move on, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, uh, yeah, and I mean, now I want to go back. I actually do. I want to take some online classes. Maybe not at Baylor because it's still expensive. Right. It's even more expensive now. But I was thinking about A and M. Okay. Online classes. Yeah. Do you think college is one of those things that you have to complete to, you know, make no. it in life? No. Okay. Yeah. I've talked about that um, with a few people on my previous episodes, and we always talk about if we thought college was one of those things that everybody feels obligated to do. Yeah. But I think you should really only go to college if you really want to be like a teacher or a lawyer, or doctor, or something yeah. like that. But if you want to be like Andrew G with the public affair, you don't have to go to college. You just got to be really funny and cute. I'm not, yeah, <laughs> so, I don't. I don't think. I don't think so. Yeah. College. Uh, I know people that are way successful. Absolutely. Like but then, more money. But there's some people who are successful that went to college too. Yeah. Let's give them their little credit. <coughs> oh like, yeah. yeah, yeah, for like sure. Said, lawyers, doctors, people. Yeah. you have to go to school. Yeah, totally. I, I completely understand. So uh, before we move on, um, I want to give a shout out to a couple more of our sponsors for the public affair. This episode is brought to you by Little Angels Waco, Jose and Rochelle Villa. Um, they have bounce houses, water slides, jelly blasters, and you know if you ever have a party going on and you want to hit them up for any rentals, make sure you do so on the number on the screen. Um, their gel blasters are real lit. Um, Jose sent me a video like i say all the time because he does it's really awesome um they're kind of like paintballs the gel blasters um except they're water-based low impact no mess unlimited ammo and he sets up an entire arena in your backyard um to have a gel blaster fight it's really awesome and the water slides and bounce houses are lit too so make sure you call little angels waco for all your bounce house water slides and gel blaster needs um i also want to give a shout out to texas contractor insurance um nancy Placini, thank you so much for sponsoring the public affair she specializes in insurance for businesses like carpentry landscaping plumbing handyman and more so if you guys want to hit up nancy for your business insurance inquiries you should do so thanks nancy you're the best all right monster so uh, we were just discussing college and, um, you know, we were talking about how people, um, you know, there's some people who are really successful that went to college and you were just saying that you don't really feel like it's necessary for the most part. So if you don't feel that way, what, what makes you want to go back and take some classes? Uh, so I'm dating a girl, Jessica. Hey, Jess. <laughs> Jess, two kids, man. Yeah. I want to set that example for them. I mean, mm. she graduated from college as well. She got a bachelor's. Uh, but she's I a nurse, wanna, right? She's a nurse. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to give... Is that her texting you during no. the public affair? Okay. No, that's, uh, <laughs> just kidding. Snapping. Okay. <laughs> um, it's actually her on set. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, <laughs> Jessica. Why are you snapping him during the show? I, I'm not doing nothing, I promise. So I know Jessica. I love Jessica. Hey, Jess. How you doing? <laughs> but, um, what's I saying? My mom and blank. Uh, you were talking about that you want to um, give the kids, like... Yeah, um, I want to give them, uh, like, an example. An example. Of, yeah. You don't His have mind to went blank because Jessica was making him nervous. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but I want to give them that example, like... 
I want him to go to college. Yeah. Get that, get that experience because it's fun. For me, it was fun going to college, meeting new people, yeah. the Fred thing, okay. know, going up, extracurricular activities. I want him to enjoy Experimenting. That. But if no, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Okay, I got you. Okay, my bad, my bad. Go ahead. But if for some reason he chooses not to go, or you know, her daughter, I, mm-hmm. you know, I wouldn't hold it against him. But I do want to set that example. Definitely. And, you know, and if you get a degree, you know, you can get it done in two or three years. Yeah. And if after that you feel like that wasn't your spot, you know, you want to do something different, you know, he aspires to be a soccer player. Okay. You don't have to go to school. Yeah. No, I just want to set an example for the kids, man. It's just it's a, they're, they're they're watching everything I do, right? From everything that I say. How I talk to their mom. Yeah, know, they're they're watching, I, especially I, the oldest one. You know, he's about to be thirteen. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I always say that's so good that there's people like you in this world that like will like lead to inspired children because that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I always tell everybody, keep your kids the fuck away from me. Like I, I ain't gonna, I'm not filtering myself. Uh, no, that was that. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I think that's really good, man. So um, you're a pretty popping DJ in Waco, I would say. Um, I think I, a lot of people knew who you I were. I was going to say that's up to people's opinion. You no, know? well, it's up to my opinion. My opinion is the only one that matters on the public affair. So anyway, um, I was, yeah, because I just walked in and Steve, the barber next door, um, was like, oh, you got Monstar yeah, coming? Out, Steve. Steve was up. Um, he was like, you got Monstar coming? I was like, yeah, you know him? He was like, yeah, I do. I was like, oh, sweet, okay. And, um, you know, I would say that you're pretty, I've been to some of your sets. I think they're really awesome. I think you're very diverse in your music. Um, what inspired you to be a DJ, and how did you get the name Monstar? <clears throat> All right, so and that's Monstar with two R's at the end, yeah, by the two way. R's. Yeah, two R's. Uh, Don't be fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the drink. Sorry, everybody does, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, really, what inspired me to be a DJ, man? Um, mm-hmm. and this is going to lead to uh, other topics, but music for me personally, and this is going back to growing up in Mexico, man. We right. didn't have a TV. We didn't have Techno- we didn't have anything. Right. Uh, we were lucky enough to have a radio. Okay. Music was playing nonstop, 24-7. When I tell you, we would go to bed to music, wake up to music. Right. Cook to music, clean to music. Y'all know Hispanics, Mexican. You, you know, know we Spanish, yeah. We clean to music. That's how I'm at in here early in the fucking morning, Saturday <laughs> morning. Mom. <laughs> okay. But uh, we, uh, we did everything to music. Yeah. So for me, and me not knowing that, you know, I was going to lose my mom this early. Oh, okay. Songs for me, every song that I listen to takes me back to a certain day of my life. Mm. And I can tell you exactly, not, I'm not going to tell you it was a Tuesday or Wednesday, but it can, yeah. I can tell you exactly the age I was when I heard this song. Right. Like Michael Jackson, man, Thriller. That album takes me through my entire childhood. Really? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, because my dad, so my dad, he wanted to be a DJ. Whenever he was younger, he had, when I tell you, he had a bunch of vinyls, man. Really? Uh, Michael Jackson, the Pink Floyd, the Barry White, yeah. the Earth, Wind, and Fire. Ooh, and diverse. This is in Mexico, too. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So, people he wasn't like, playing. Hey. Yeah, so he knew. <laughs> yeah, how'd you get it, Dad? <laughs> how'd you get them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the music, man. There's the business out there. Love uh, your that, dad. That was his vice, man. Music okay. and basketball was his vice. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's all he did. Yeah. And, um, so, growing up, like I said, just all, it was just music 24-7. Definitely. So, growing up. I never thought I would be a DJ, but uh-huh. one day I, I just I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try it out because okay. you know it's it was back in 2012 when I decided to, or actually 2011. Okay. Uh, practiced about three months. Damn, everything's three months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I was practicing. Good man, things come you know, in threes, darling. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's that third time is a charm. Yeah, they do. Um, but uh, hopefully yeah, my third date will be a charm. That <laughs> <those> bitches. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but yeah, I would just practice, man. I would yeah. do a lot of videos, network with other DJs. It, and it sucks because some DJs are, you know, not as friendly as Yo, I, I was. That was my as, next question. But go ahead. As, uh, I'm going to get to it. I have it written down, right? Yeah. 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 The one DJ that I can tell you that reached, that I would reach out to and he would actually reply back is uh-huh. this DJ out of Miami, DJ Upscene. Oh, um, shout out DJ Upscene. DJ Upscene, man, out of Miami. Yeah. Um, he, uh, I, I found him on YouTube. Yeah. And I just started asking him questions. This guy would actually reply back, man. So he actually actually became my friend on Facebook. Oh, wow. on Snap. Tell him to watch IG. the public affair. Yeah, yeah. I'm shout a, out. I'm a, I've seen. I'll shout tag, out. I'll tag him. Yeah. Um, you work at Mangos? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, he's a big, big time DJ. He's a big. Oh, yeah, okay. Man, I've seen. DJ from shout Pitbull, out. I've seen. Rick Ross. Oh, Low Rider. oh shit. Good for you, yes. man. Yeah. No, he's, he's a big time DJ. Man. Good he's connect. a real humble DJ. Is he hot? <laughs> <laughs> He's always putting Okay, on I, was, I know. It's not Jose. Like, 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 hey. Listen, Jose made me get a drink from fucking Eskimo shot. Uh, nah, he's feeling uh, anyway. Nah, he's you feeling know what I mean. You know it's all love. It's all love. Before everybody, everybody gives me shit talking about why are you making them guys feel uncomfortable. He doesn't feel uncomfortable. We've been friends for a long time. Yeah, it's just, it's just he understands. Like yeah, that. you know what I mean? But anyway, go ahead. But uh, yeah, man. So he, re- I would reach out to him and he would actually reply back. He would yeah. give me 
hints and, and um like advice pain points, yeah, advice stuff yeah. like that and um then i just after three months i want to say i got my first gig at a house party and of course it was free <laughs> oh shit it was free uh, okay my friend kong <laughs> my friend kong they just party for free and after that it yeah. jumped to hey man there was a dj at this party blah 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 so yeah. from there i started DJing at metro i remember some metro metro yeah Shout out to jesse <clears throat> all the um, Adam, I don't know them uh, like that. Jerry, <laughs> Jimmy, them, okay, those, give them all their little shout man, outs. Yeah, yeah. We, and those people became my family to me too. My oh really? Yeah. Okay. Jesse and Jerry were actually there. Are they all DJs? No, no, no. Oh, uh, so they're just Je- like uh, Jesse used to own Metro. Okay, yeah, see, I Jerry know that. was one of the bartenders there. He's actually from New York too. Oh really? Yeah. Hey Jerry, I'm surprised you don't know. I don't. I don't get out like that. Oh. Everybody thinks I'm big, like go out and party <laughs> slut. Like no, I'm not. Like yeah. I be listen. I go home. I do this. After this, I'm going to power when I wait to do the radio show. When I get done with the radio show, if anybody wants to slide in my DMs, they have until 10:30 to slide in my DMs. If not, I'm gonna go home, play games, and go to bed. That's, right. That's it. <laughs> and then book my next guest in the public <laughs> affair. So yeah. yeah. No, uh, but shout out to a guy from New York, Long Island. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's from uh, Brooklyn. Oh, from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh, my mom's Brooklyn. from Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn. And you could tell too. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, sorry. So, yeah, it's the Metro. Yeah. Uh, same week, somebody from Ice House, Fifth Street Ice House, which mm. is now Backyard Saloon, I believe. I think so. Yeah. I Something remember like some that. Ice House. Yeah. DJ ADZ. DJs there. Shout out. ADZ. ADZ. Hey, ADZ. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. DJs there now. But, uh, but yeah, back then it was Fifth Street Ice House. I was there for, I want to say four or five years. Yeah. Before they closed down. I got you. And uh, yeah, so it was Metro, then uh, Ice House, and then Model. Okay. <clears throat> Model was from 2015 to 17 before they closed down. Oh, really? Before they are they the ones that are Austin's now the warehouse? Now it's the warehouse. Now it's the warehouse. Now I went to the warehouse, warehouse one time. Yeah, now hey, it's warehouse. warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my spot was always Junction 84 <laughs> upstairs because my uh, radio boss would DJ up there, so I'd get him for free. And they always played the salsa, merengue, bachata, reggaeton, and that was my shit. I think I only yeah. DJ. I actually DJ there one time for Labor Day. Okay. Uh, a while back, but I didn't really go. I guess it wasn't really my my scene. Like you know, that. he used to ask me to get the girls on the dance floor. Who? My boss. Oh, your boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, used to, he used to. I'm gonna put him on the spot. He used to text me on my phone and say, "Hey," because I'd be the only one out there dancing for a little bit. Like it would get crunk like around twelve thirty in the morning, one o'clock. But that's usually when I was sliding and somebody's dance come pick me up. And so, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Because I'm the person that gets there early, like ten o'clock. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the fucking loser. Like, woo, what's up? Trying to get the drinks uh, I'm trying to get 11. my drinks on, yeah. yeah. Now, this was back in the day when Junction 84 was open. And um, he would text me. Like, I would be at the bar. Like, I would talk to everybody. Like, hey, what's up, Andrew? What's up? And um, he'd be like, hey, get those girls on the dance floor. Get these girls on the dance floor. And I'm like, all right, give me a minute. And some of them were shy, but some of them were for it. Because girls like dancing with me. And there was this one guy this one time who, um, he was hot. And he wanted to dance with all the girls but I was dancing with. And they didn't want to dance with him. They only wanted to dance with me. You know what I mean? And I was like, why not? And they were like, because he's creepy. And I was like, <laughs> and you're not. And I was like, I guess. Man, I don't know what to tell you, bro. <laughs> they, 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 don't, they ain't feeling you like that. So anyway, um, you know, you were just talking about how some of the, there was not some many nice DJs. I'm going to tell you, working in Power 108 at radio, I've learned that. Um, I've met some DJs who were very, um, didn't want to see other people succeed. There were some DJs who really took you under their wing and really wanted to. Um, shout out DJ Drew. <laughs> that's it and so, um, and, um, no and there was and there were some that were just like i don't want you to be better than me i've watched some djs actually take opportunity from another by really shady ways um i saw that happen to my friend jr shout out jr gauna and so big swole. yeah big swole. oh is that him okay yeah, it I don't is, know if he's it? still big. I ain't seen him in a while. I haven't seen him. He, like, disappeared, JR. Where have you been? I, I know, right? He probably <laughs> got fat. He didn't want to see. You know when you get a girlfriend, you get fat. So, <laughs> so, true. true, right? And so, you know what? And by the way, we need to go to Fuji, like, soon. But anyway, um, how do you feel like the, the DJ competition is in town? I mean, you don't have to name names. Uh, but I'm getting this close to naming names. No, but, <laughs> no, but I, I will say, working at Power One, I have seen firsthand. There was a DJ who told me, I don't want you to be better than me. Like, I'm not going to teach you what it's like to be on radio. I'm not going to teach you this. I'm not going to teach you to board. I'm not going to teach you nothing because you, to me, are competition. And if I teach you to be better than me, you're going to take my job and it's going to leave me with nothing. And my thing is I don't believe in playing favorites. Like, if you believe in playing favorites, just be the favorite. Yeah. That, that's pretty much it. You know, you'll, you'll get picked when you're the favorite. That's the only type of favoritism I believe in. So I, you know, that's not worth mentioning his name. He can go to hell for all I care. <laughs> but anyway, um, how do you feel about the competition in Waco? I mean, I mean, has have you experienced that personally? <clears throat> I mean, as far Waco, as DJing, DJing. Waco, no. I mean, I got a lot mm. for other DJs. 
I don't know if it's the same way around, you know, towards me. But uh, I've got love for all the DJs, man. You know, I'm not I'm not afraid to. Uh, it's not. If I need a <laughs> gig, you know, a gig away, or they able hey, we're gonna go with this guy. I said I'm like, yeah, cool. You know, it's it's all about. It's business. Yeah, it's business. Uh -huh. you know, I don't take it personally in any way, man. Yeah. Um, you know, I said now I've made friends with all the DJs around Waco. You know, I started with uh, Mingus. Mingus was used to be at uh, Ice House. Yeah. I don't think he DJs anymore. Uh -huh. Photography now, but <clears throat> I was um, DJing with Mingus. I do want to give a shout out, man. I know he's probably gonna be mad at me because I didn't do it first. But Quick Mix Rick from Dallas, Texas, uh -huh. ninety-seven ninety beat. Oh, okay. That is the guy besides DJ you have seen. Yeah. That literally took me under his wing, mm -hmm. and he wanted to keep me under his wing, but then, man, he's gonna get a girlfriend. He's not gonna blow, you know. Oh, so really? He, told, he literally told me, he said, "Man, I want to take you under my wing, but man. you got a girlfriend, blah blah blah. You yeah. know, you're not gonna do it. You know, you're only gonna do it occasionally." But right, uh, he really wanted to take me under. But he he taught me a lot about the game, man. Oh, the main okay. thing that he taught me was, you are gonna come across DJs that they they're not gonna like you, or like you said, they're not gonna want you to do better than them, right? Because they're afraid of, you know. I'm going to lose my spot if I teach this guy. Well, because know, they suck. What do you expect me? me? But, uh, <laughs> no, nah, man, Quick Mix, he, uh, he told me a lot about networking. Right. <clears throat> and I actually got to meet another guy in Miami because of him, uh, DJ RZ Spins. Okay. Out of Miami. He DJs at um, Clevelander in South Beach, Miami. Shout out to him. Oh, I walked past that place. Oh, it's, <clears throat> it's awesome. That's where they yeah. had the uh, Super Bowl parties. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Oh, okay, February. got you. Yeah, but, uh, man, shout out to him. And, uh, no, I don't think I – I mean – I've sh I've reached out to other DJs. I don't expect all of them to reply back. Right. I don't expect them to share the knowledge that they have. Right. But I'm fortunate enough to have had some DJs that did reply back and would give me advice. Yeah. And you know, tell me the do's and don'ts about DJing. Um, and Quick Mix, sorry. No, you're he good. He was actually DJing at Ice House for a minute too. Okay. Well, you know, and shout <clears> out Quick Mix. Yeah, man. So Quick Mix is a good man, man. Yeah. He's a real family guy, man. Real right. Good friend. I consider him family. We don't talk a lot, you know. He lives in Dallas. He's a busy. He's a very busy man. Right. And uh, we all have our lives, man. So you know, I got when, you. It, when we talk, it's like day one, man. Like we never stop talking. Right. I, and I just I never got the politics behind that because again, I've seen it so often. <coughs> and excuse me, ooh, the drink. <laughs> excuse me. I just um I never understood why instead of just being together and there's room for everybody why you felt the need like with this particular dj you look like a homeless bum so i'm not gonna i'm not going yeah he does and so i'm not <laughs> i'm not gonna hire you for an event over like monster not to put you guys together but i'm um, just saying like hypothetically speaking you know who appealing wise you look great and i want you at my party djing like i don't want somebody who doesn't comb his hair and you know has disgusting hairy armpits and anyway <laughs> So, <laughs> so as a DJ, <laughs> cheers. Cheers, man. Thank you for coming to the public yeah, affair. Man. You Thanks know what I'm talking about. We had that conversation. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about your family. Big shout out to Laura, his sister. Love her. My sis. Love her. Yeah, my, she's my great. Um, I saw her the other day when I was buying a mask from some dude um, who's hot. And he. Um, I guess they live right around the corner. I know, right? I'm so inappropriate. <laughs> and, you know, let me just say thank you for not being, like, a prude about it either. I mean, you know what I mean? You know. You, you chill it. You be you, man. Thank you, you darling. You, That's it. And you be you, too. That's we'll it. We love you no matter what. I know. You're the best. Let's yeah, cheers to that. Yeah. Let's cheers. Yeah. Anyway, fist bump. And, and then cheers. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about your family life. Um, I know of your sister. Well, I know your sister, Laura. Uh, we partied together at... Sid's wife's birthday party. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, my, was... Sid, who was on my prior episode. Now, uh, what was that? Two episodes ago. Two episodes uh, yeah, Sid, with, uh, Sid the barber uh, and Marcus yeah. Guerrero. Yeah, um, Sid threw a, a party for his wife. I almost said girlfriend. Wife as my yeah. my bad girl. And um, <laughs> he threw a party, and then um, you know I got to really get to know like Laura and her husband. And her husband was really great because he we talked about the whole gay thing too. And he, <laughs> no, he was he was like you know we, I never really interacted with somebody like you, but you know you're not like who what I thought you'd be. Like you were just very cool, and you know you weren't trying to like do anything inappropriate. Like you're just very real. And I was like yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm Andrew motherfucking Jake. Very blunt. You know, I don't want to say blunt. <laughs> Let me shout out to the fact that you're actually not sweating today. I, I'm not, right? You're not Yo, sweating. I'm not because I this drink is cold. I was like, hey, this guy is not sweating today. <laughs> Why you got to put me on the spot like that, bro? Because <laughs> yeah, you put me on the spot. So I was like, hold on, man. He's not even sweating. Yo, well, I have a good, good job because I'm not. Like, usually my glasses be fogging and yeah, shit. I, I see something right here. I was like, nope. No, you want to cool. know what? Because everybody, like the DJs that I had two episodes ago, they brought Bucanas. Right? But, uh, the liquor. Uh, DJ Thaz, DJ Renee, Renee DJ yeah, Alex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They brought bucanas and they know I can't drink no bucanas. They know I can't do that. And so, um, like, when I drink hard liquor like that, I get, like, very sweaty. And a beer, too. I start yeah, sweating. I like, like You saw me at Sid's party. Yeah. I was a flop, sweating-ass mess, bro. And But this drink, I guess it's just, like, because it's cold. I don't know. 
I mean, was good, man. It's I, I really like, good, it's this not, Purple Haze. Shout out to Eskimo Hut. Yeah, man, it's my first time. Good. I like this Purple Haze. Um, I'm not really into purple things, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> I don't even drink, but this right here, man. That's really good. Yeah, and thank you for pointing out that I'm not sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, no. Um, okay, so I know the sister. Really fun. Um, you know, I, I do want kind of, and if it's okay with you, I want to I wanna kind of tap in a little bit about your mom. Um, you reached out to me to come to the visitation. She passed with cancer last year, correct? And if it gets too hard, you stop me. Okay. Um, I didn't know your parents personally. I did not. Um, I remember going to the visitation. And it gets a little deep here, guys. So, you know. Okay. And I love him. Um, I went to the visitation. Um, and you- I ran into your dad, who was like, I know you. <laughs> And I was like, from Howard went away? And he's like, no. Because um, <laughs> that always happens, right? <laughs> and so, because um, I didn't have this podcast yet. And so um, he was like, no, I re- you used to work at Altos de Jalisco in Hewitt, the restaurant. You did? I did when I was like 16 or 17. Really? Like, I was in high, because you're older than me. Yes. So uh, when I was in high school, me and my best friend Hyman were working there. Yo, we used to fucking kill it over there. Make some Wait, tips. Wait, hold on. What? I'm not the fat gay kid. No. No, 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 no. Okay. no. I actually remember you from there, but I didn't know you okay, were there. Okay, look. Well, yeah, of course, you didn't know facial hair. Like right. That. Well, you see, that's so crazy because when I saw your, and that's, oh my God, this was last year. So I was 28. So this was 10 plus years ago. So you were like 16. I 17. was like 16, yeah. 17. It was at least 11, 12 years. Yeah. And he goes, I know you. You, used, you worked at that restaurant. I re- wow. Do you remember me from there? Yes, I remember you. Man. I, remember <laughs> I was thinner, wasn't you. I? I, you, <laughs> I was thinner, but I was bald and I didn't have no facial hair and nothing. No, I ugly. remember you. See, I'm sorry that I don't remember you. I, know, <laughs> so, I, yeah. I, remember I was faces. I remember, okay. Of course, I didn't remember your name. But right, right, right. We never, you. we never gave our names at that restaurant when we were oh, working there. We were just like, you. "What you want?" Yeah. Yes, actually, I think we went there around Christmas time. Oh, okay. So. I, wow, you remember to the detail. Yeah. Yeah. But, so I, I ran into your dad, um, and he was like, "I know you from there," and. I was like, really? He goes, yeah, you used to serve me and my family and my wife, and it's so good to see you. And, you know, I hope all is well. We had a little conversation, and I just thought it was so awesome that he, I mean, I guess, remembered me. I guess like, that's where I get my memory from, because yeah. I didn't think he remember you. <laughs> no, well, that's what I'm saying. He, I mean, as soon as I walked in, you know, I was just in designer head tough. You know, because when I was working at Jalisco, I wasn't making that kind of money. You know, I had my, um, ooh, was I wearing my stingrays that day? I don't remember. Anyway, <laughs> inappropriate. So um, I thought it was, I always thought he was a really nice guy. Um, you know, just meeting him in that little moment. And I saw that he had to stay really strong for your family. Um, you know, obviously your family was torn down from what happened. Um, and I just remember seeing him really just try to keep it together. Um, what was that like for you? What, how, what would you like to talk about as far as that goes? Because uh, I think cancer is such a sensitive subject. Um, a lot of people get it or have it and don't know it. Um, it's one of those things that just sneaks up on you. And yeah. it's like, it's scary. Yeah. So would you mind talking about that no, at all? No, no. Okay. You know, I know he did ask me before I came on the show if that was okay to talk I, I about. I did. And I agreed to it because I do want to educate people on taking care of yourself. Right. Um, coming from a Hispanic family, you know, we don't really believe in going to the doctor and getting checked up every no. six months. I don't ever go. You know yeah. I mean, I get um, checked up. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We, uh <laughs> Mm. I mean, it, it, <clears throat> cancer is such a silent, deadly disease that, right. you know, sometimes you're fortunate enough to see the symptoms, to catch it early and, and you know, get rid of it. Right. But then you get cancers that you don't have a chance. And even if you do catch it at stage one, you know, like colon cancer, your pancreatic cancer, stuff like that, stage one, man, you might live to live four or five years. Right. Um, going through that, um, I've had to educate myself a lot on <coughs> cancer. Right. Um, I've been looking into uh, volunteering for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Um, but it definitely, man, it, it um it was everything was so sudden. Right. Um, How long was it when when you found out? <clears throat> like September seventh was the day we found out she had cancer. Um, but two months before that, she was having problems with. Um, she thought it was acid reflux. Okay. Now this was September seventh, two thousand. Last year. Eighteen. No, last year. Nineteen. 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 Whew. 19. Yeah. <clears throat> um, September six, nine oh five. Man, she calls me. Yeah. Saying she's in pain and. Uh, I hadn't seen my mom in about a week and a half, man. We were actually we're going through the same thing right now at, at my job. We're doing our physical inventory. Mm-hmm. We're preparing for the physical inventory, and uh, around this time last year, we were doing that plus training for a new uh, system that we have at work. And uh, 
I mean, I was working like 60, 70 hours plus. Right. And, you know, they used to work, well, she used to work nights. So by 6, 6.30ish at the, you know, at the latest, she was already in bed. So by the time I got off of work, you know, she was already asleep, either asleep or in bed already. So I would just call her up. It was just two weeks before I found out she had cancer, man. Something in me, <clears throat> it just didn't feel right. And I would just mm. call my mom just to check up on her, you know, right. be like, hey, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. You know, I miss you. I, you know, I'm working a lot. I, you know, then a girl, two kids. It's just, I'm steady busy. Started DJing again around that time. And I hadn't seen my mom in about a week and a half, man. And uh, <clears throat> that night that she called me to take her to the ER and I went home. And when I seen her, I, I I just couldn't believe how much weight she had lost. Mm. I mean, it was just, I remember she gave me the biggest hug. And <clears throat> Do you want to stop? We can stop. You at, sure? At that moment, I didn't yeah. know that six weeks after that, I was going to lose my mom. Um. <laughs> but it was only six weeks? Six weeks. Oh, wow. From the time we found out that she had cancer, man, for right. six weeks. And uh, what I want to tell people, man, is, is check up on your family. And for uh -huh. those that still have the parents out there, man, force them to get checkups. I know yeah. that it's something that we said in my family, we didn't believe in, in oh, let's go to the doctor. No. And I remember when she turned yeah. 54 in April. I would always ask her, I was like, Mom, does cancer run our family? Does this run right. our family? She's like, no, just diabetes and high blood pressure. Right. That's the only thing that was in our family. And I said, okay, because I need you to start getting checked. You know, I need you to start every three months, six months, you know, getting checked up. Right. But <clears throat> she was, my mom was so strong, man. She never, when I tell you never, complained once about being tired. Right. About whatever. Never complained. And how, how old was she again when she passed? 54. 54. She's just from 55. <clears throat> it's past April. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sorry about that. But going through that, man, it honestly, it has made me who I am now completely. Right. Not, I won't say completely. I'm still learning who I am because now it's just, I'll, I've lost a part of me. Okay. <clears throat> I've lost, you know, my mother, man. I, she's in heaven. She's with God. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's a part of life. But it's kind of hard to accept it. Yeah. And I don't think I've accepted it yet. Okay. It'll be a year next month on the 18th. And, and I wanted to ask, um, I mean, like I said, I saw your dad at the um, mm -hmm. the visitation. And um, I, I remember, obviously, I saw you very ups crying. Your sister came in and she was uh, a wreck. I mean, you got, that's your mother. You know what I mean? And I see somebody like your dad just really, I mean, I'm sure she was upset. How long were they married? Like forever. 33 years. 33 years. And to see your wife there. And I, I mean, I just really saw him greet everybody and really just keep it together. And um, how would you say that you coped with that afterwards? Like, I mean, how did how were you able to move on from that? I haven't. You haven't. haven't. What, did you, was there anything you did after like, after her passing that you kind of like tried to, um, I guess, mask your emotions with or anything or? Just work. Just work. <clears throat> I was really working a lot. Okay. Uh, I would, I mean, really just worked anything to keep my mind off of it. But right. it, it's hard because from the time I wake up, I think about it. Yeah. To the time I go to sleep, I think about it. But now what what I'm trying to do now is I don't want to think about the end. I want to think about the good times, right. the good memories, the happy memories, the okay. laughable moments. Um, you know, but dying is part of life. Yeah. Um, but it, it it honestly has it has made me, it's making me into the man that I need to be right now, man. Mm -hmm. Because I remember two a week and a half before she passed. What's crazy? Another crazy thing is when she never cried. Really, she never cried. We never talked about the uh, the c word. Uh, and I remember one day I got a call from the hospice. The c word is cancer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> the uh, hospice nurse called me while I was at work, telling me that my mom's blood pressure was dropping. And uh, okay. I took off. I would left early, and I went straight home, and I cried, and I told her, I said, I'm not ready for you to leave. Uh -huh. and she's like, why are you crying? She's like, <clears throat> I'm good. Yeah. Whether my will happens or God's will happens, I'm good. Yeah. So don't cry, because I'm not crying. You Have you seen me crying? I was like, no. Yeah. So sometimes it gets kind of hard to let out those emotions, because yeah. I saw how strong she was right. going through that. 
So it's like, why can't you be as strong and you're not even going through this? What, what do you think inspired her to be so strong through that? I mean, surely it's not an easy thing to go through. Do you think that she was confident in her beliefs and in, in oh, God? Oh, she, yeah, man. Okay. My mom was a Christian woman. Really? To the fullest. Uh, when I remember when right before we came from Mexico, uh, uh-huh. we found a Christian church in Mexico. Uh, we started going, and of course, being kids, you're not really into the whole church thing. I, oh, I yeah. don't like it. We don't. Uh, we don't get the importance. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> this is boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get everything my mom was doing from the time, as as long as I can remember. You know, suffering from not knowing if we were gonna eat that yeah. night, if we were gonna. I mean, everything, man, just right. taking care of us. She didn't know if we were going to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. From that to now, I mean, that's what made her strong. Her belief in God was so strong. You know, she was like, whether I stay here or God's will, I'm going to be all right, man, because yeah. I'm going to be there with him. Okay. And uh, you know, she was a hardcore Christian woman, man. And, uh, right. She's, she instilled those beliefs in me. Well, she sounds like a very strong woman to have gone through something. Oh my God. To have gone through something like that. Like, let me say something. If I found something out like that, I would, I don't know. I'd be very irresponsible, whatever. But it sounds like, you know, for her to pull it together for your family and for you guys. And I I can't even imagine what that's like for you. Um, I remember when you even asked me to go, I guess you just needed the support of just people around you. I'm sure your mind just goes crazy. And I just remember hugging you and you just like crying um, you know, and I, I don't care what anybody says to watch a grown man cry is like very sentimental. Um, but I'm so sorry that your family has to go through that. And I think about you and your sister and your dad. I mean, you post pictures, especially like you and your dad and stuff. How's your dad holding up? He, uh, I mean, it's the same. And we're just, <clears throat> we're trying to cope with it. Right. Learn ways to dealing with it. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely hard, man. I'm not going to lie. There's, there's where we have our. That's where we feel strong. There's that's where we feel down. Yeah. But uh, we're only humans. Definitely. But uh, he's uh, he's deep into church, man. He's uh, studying to be a pastor. Oh, uh, cool. He's in church Tuesday mornings, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights. This is um, they're doing like a seminar. Uh huh. To be a pastor, prayer ch- uh, on Friday night, and of course church on Sunday. Yeah. So he's deep into church. Well, I would love to reconnect with your father one day. Yeah. Um, only because he remembered me. <laughs> yeah. So, no, no, but I was also because he doesn't, he doesn't remember a lot of people. Well, and he I think that's you, but he doesn't remember <laughs> a lot of people. He remembered me by face. Like I mean, obviously not by yeah. first name basis, but I just thought that was really awesome. Yeah. And I will say, I, it was so admirable to watch a uh, the man of the family really just really keep it together. Because I'm sure when your wife passes away, you know, you're not. I'm sure you just want to break down in a little ball and cry and, you know, oh, my God, the world's not fair and throw a tantrum. But he really, really, I, I will never forget that, Jose, even though I don't know your dad like that, but I, I was observing him and watching him. And he got up without a tear in his eye and said hi to everybody that walked in. Thank you for coming. Uh, God bless you. Blase, blase. And he, he just really, really kept it together. And that was so admirable to see. So big ups to your dad for that. Mm-hmm. And, and prayers to your family, because I'm sure that was the hardest thing to go through. And, and now, and you know, if you ever need anything, I'm here for you. You know, know that. I know. You know, yeah, my know number ain't changing in 11 years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't changing. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate um, it. So let's, let's diverse to a, a little bit of a lighter note. Um, I want to talk about more of your mixes as a DJ. Thank you again for sharing all that, by Definitely. the way. I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, I just want to. Yeah. <laughs> let's take a drink. So, um, <laughs> mm. And God bless you and your family. A little bit of a lighter note, Jose. You're, like I said earlier, you're a very poppin' DJ. Um, you have some mixes on an app called Mixcloud. Mixcloud. And I listened to them. I did. Um, I love your R&B sessions. <laughs> Part one, yo, I love the R&B sessions. <laughs> I didn't promote that as much. That you was didn't, and you should thing. have. Yeah. I, well, I'm still going to. That is when, to. like, I have that on when I have somebody over. There's, <laughs> I have Joey Sice on. The, like on the TV, yeah. and then I, I did turn on the R&B sessions that yeah. one time. <laughs> you know, um, I love the R&B sessions. Then you have a, a Quarantunes hip hop mix. Um, why don't you talk to us a little bit about like the inspiration between those mixes are, and are you going to continue to do more? And what what do you want to do going yeah, forward yeah, with yeah. the mixes? Well, first up, man, shout out to DJ City. Who's DJ City? I was going to ask you. DJ City is a DJ pool where I get my music from. Oh, okay. DJ City, Club Killers, mm-hmm. and Headliners Music Club. Mm-hmm. The top three uh, music pools where I get my music from. How does that work? Do you have to buy them individually? or? Well, you get some membership. You got to pay. Oh, uh, okay. This one is 90 bucks for three months. Yeah. Club Killers is 40 a month, and Headliners is 30 a month. I've seen some DJs in Waco <laughs> pull some shit off YouTube. 
<laughs> I swear to God, the radio station. Let me get the mix from YouTube real quick. I'm gonna take it to the club. Put the fifth on there. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that shit. I was like, I thought that's where you. Got, I'm not kidding. Nah, man, I thought that's where you guys got your music, and I'm like, oh, that's easy. You know what I mean? This is why DJs charge a certain rate. Oh, you get what you pay for <clears throat> because our yeah. equipment is expensive. Yes, our music is expensive. Absolutely, the merchandise is expensive. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Networking, our name is expensive. Yeah, you know, the T-shirt. Oh, the, absolutely. The, the, the glasses. The Flyers, all I, that stuff. and I tell that to everybody too because I always recommend some DJs. And like, oh, that's a little expensive. That's a little expensive. Yeah, it is. Like, it is. You're gonna get what you pay for. Yeah, but yeah, because <clears throat> there's a production behind it yeah, too, yeah, isn't I mean, there? Yeah, just, you know, we're the, the stuff that I mean, if you just want to plug in an iPod, I mean, an iPad or whatever, yeah, you plug in that's you know that's fine. But how cute being a <laughs> DJ, you know, it's it gets expensive. It right. gets expensive, but I love it. I yeah. love it. I work hard for it, and um, the. So the hip hop mix, that right there, a lot of p- DJs, you know, in order for you to spread your name out and put it out there, you got to spend some money and time. Right. <clears throat> You're not going to get paid for it. I didn't get paid for this mix. I had to pay for my flyer. Right. Um, what inspired me to do it means I just, I do want to expand my name out there more. Not for popularity, not for to be a celebrity or anything like that. I just, I love what I do, man. And I want to get as many gigs as I can to show what I, you know, what I love to do. Right. Uh, I've done a lot of weddings, uh, private parties. Uh-huh. I love it, man. I love doing weddings. I love oh, really? Weddings. That's my favorite thing. I weddings. love going to weddings. Yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> being the DJ of your most important day of your life. Oh, I'd like going to weddings, get fucked up and <laughs> make the party cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah. But, no, I Shout out to Hermino and Rebecca. Love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nah, I love doing weddings. Man. Yeah. No, this, this mix right here was just, uh, so it took me about a month for me to just research. I listened to a lot of different DJs mm-hmm. and my, I, I guess you can call me a versatile DJ. I, I, I'm an open format. I like different kinds of music. Right. So, I wanted to take some taste from from Miami, New York, Chicago, and Texas, and put it all together. Oh yeah, and put it all in the pot. So I was I just listening to different music, right. different mixes, different techniques. And uh, one day I just went into to my lab, man. And I, when I tell you, I didn't make a list of the songs that I was on DJ. I was just, it was just a sporadic. It just like it yeah, just come up the top. Like ooh, this song will be good. And this, yeah. song. I will say, I, I'm listening because I I've listened to both mixes. I sure have. I gotta support my boy. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think I shared them too. Okay? <laughs> and uh, they come, they come out when the little side piece comes over. Okay, but I'm just saying, like, I, I can hear the versatility in your music and your mixes. Um, as far as the music and the different types of, like, genres and where they're from, and so yes. like this. Oh, I used to listen to the song heavy when I lived in New York, and this song, you know, is big here, and so I can definitely hear the versatility in your music, which I really appreciate. There so, was a song in that uh, mix that I did. And uh, Sid, shout out, shout out to Sid the Barber. He's one of my barbers, too. Oh, we both get our haircuts oh, by yeah. Sid, right? Okay, <laughs> well, yeah. I got two barbers, man. I got Misa and I got Sid. I got to show them both. Oh, love, my friends you know? get their haircut from Misa. I, I got a shout out to Misa. Love, I think our friend requested you and you didn't accept it. <laughs> no, he did. I asked him. <laughs> did he? He did. Oh, yeah. I have to check. Okay. Like, yeah, Misa. I think I follow him on, on a public affair. Oh, oh, yeah, no, Misa, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. my, my friends Jay and Israel get their haircut by him. Oh, okay. Shout out to Misa. No, I'm blessed by two. Good barbers, Two good barbers, Misa, Sid, and, and that's why we. Both, but that's why we look fine. That's if why they're we look both booked. Then I come on here. I'll oh come really? On here. Yeah, I come on. Uh, here. I'm not touching my own hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll come no. on here. Uh, what time? Nine o'clock at night? <laughs> oh, okay, I'll be right there. Nah. Thirty dollars. All right. <laughs> Sid stays packed. Misa stays packed. Yeah. Like, you know, if, in my life is so crazy. Like sometimes I don't get a chance to to book, so I come on here. But oh no. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Sid reached out to me one day. He was like, "Man, this song reminds me of blah blah." It was a juvenile song. Uh, set it off. Okay. This song came out like in 2001, I think. Yeah. So you know that, that different songs, I and mean, you say it, it just it brings back a, a certain memory, a certain time. Oh yeah, I'm, life, I'm with you. Like, I'm with you. You know, and now I've been well. Now <clears throat> I don't really like some of the new music that's been coming out. Mm. I don't know about you, but no, 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 I'm with you. I like I have a whole '90s, 2000s yeah, that's playlist on my phone. I, I actually do, have a yeah. station on my iHeartRadio app from Miami. It was all '90s and 2000s, yeah. and it's just you know what song I heard on your? Um, I think it was the R&B sessions. Um, it was, I can see you lying, cause you're denying. You stutter, 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 oh, uh, stutter, stutter. Gordon? Yeah, uh, whatever his name is. I know. Uh, my damn, my damn, my damn. You Joe, do not hey, know me, but I know you Mr. very well. Yeah, when I heard yeah, that yeah, shit, I was like, ah, <laughs> what? This is my yeah, champion. See, that right there, yes. that song reminds me of my mom. Really? You know, good memories. Good memories. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Know, it's, it, and it was always cleaning music. So yeah. every morning in our household, we had to do a chore. Uh, okay. We woke up. 
And it was a Saturday morning. It wasn't cartoons. It no, wasn't I didn't cereal. do cartoons neither. Yeah. The first thing you had to do was yeah. you had to make your bed, yes. vacuum. And clean this shit so up. So yep. <clears throat> my sister, my two other brothers, we all had a chore mm-hmm. uh, the day, the next day. So we all know that someone had to vacuum. Yeah. Someone had to dust. Someone had to soap them out the kitchen, blah, blah, blah. You do have two other brothers, don't you? Yeah. I think I'm friends with one of them on Facebook. One and uh, Miguel. Miguel is a yeah. dog that one. The thug that one. Thug that one I think I'm friends with. Up. Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> no, <laughs> I think I'm, he got a girlfriend. He ain't gay. <laughs> I didn't say he was gay. I was oh, just saying what's up. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> why, oh, see, why you got to assume things? Why you got to assume things? I was, just, like, I was just saying, hey, Miguel, that's it. Yeah, see? If you have a girlfriend, I'm sure the girlfriend's hot too. What's oh, up? Because you said, what's up? Oh, okay. I didn't mean it like that. No, hey, Miguel, how you doing? Well, yeah, <laughs> look at your face like, what's up? <laughs> uh, let me tell you, no. I, no disrespect to Miguel. But I can get whoever. Not Miguel, I'm not talking about Miguel, but I can get whoever the fuck I want because I'm a player. Anyway, I'm already telling you. I did say I'm that. Me and Kuti. I'm gonna get him. Yeah, I had a vi- yeah. Anyway, um, and shout out. I think I'm friends with your brother Juan. Yes. But anyway, I'm sorry. Okay, so you guys each had a um a chore. The, a chore. Yeah. Sometimes it was swap chores, whatever. But anyway, we would always play music. And back then, you know, we had like the BT One Hundred and Paul, TRL on MTV. Oh, I used to love those after MTV school. MTV jams. Yes, so. MTV hits. Yeah, yes. No, well, it was jams. There was jams and hits. Well, there was had, two. There was two was different jams. ones. Okay, you had jams. Yeah. I could see you listening to jams. I was yeah. listening to hits. Okay. And, uh, and do you remember Mundos? Or am I crazy? Yes. You remember Mundos? Yes. Okay, remember eighteen I and over on Mundos? That. I fucked with Mundos heavy. Yes. I loved I Mundos forgot. on Friday nights. Eighteen and over. That was my shit. And then it was MTV. <laughs> Tres, and yep. yep. That yep. was short lived. Yep. Yeah, so we're yeah. short lived. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, we would wake up and we just play the top 10 on Saturday morning. And, really? Uh, I forgot what show. It was uh, ABC or whatever. I forgot what it was, man. Uh-huh. Then it was like Ludacris was big back then. Bow Wow. Uh, Jessica Simpson. Oh, yeah. Um, Remember Bow Wow and Jessica Simpson had that song together? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the one that was, yeah. it popped in my head. Uh, Janet Jackson. Oh, oh man, you. you were taking me back here, yeah. huh? J-Lo yeah. and stuff. Uh, oh, my God. Even Ricky Martin, you know, the little, oh, little, little okay. Yo, y'all better shut the fuck up. Ricky Martin, went, <laughs> Ricky Martin went hard as fuck back in the day, and he still does. Okay, I don't give a fuck how gay he is. He, he went hard as living la vida loca, all that shit, yes. Yeah, but, and uh, J-Lo and Jessica Simpson and Bow Wow, yes. Yeah. yeah. So all that, all that music, man, it just, it just brings you back to... So many memories. Absolutely. And, 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 uh, if I have any choice of technology, I would keep music. I, I'll keep, there's one thing I can yeah. do. I, I, you know, I, I relate to you in that way. A lot of my friends make fun of me because I remember a song. You say life events. I remember them in grades. Because when I like, like, oh, this song came out when I was in fifth grade or this song came out when I was in sixth grade. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that yeah. was me because when I was in, um, I went to all the way up to middle school in New York. And our, everybody listens to every different types of music. And I mean, Tempted to Touch by Rupi was my fucking jam. Man. Bitch, Tempted. I used, to, I used to want that to be my ringtone. One Tempted hit wonder, to touch. I don't think he came out with uh, He really that, right? didn't. Not really. I remember Rupi. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That Tempted to Touch was my shit. Tempted to Touch. And it's a woman, man. I need you so much. Yes. Kevin Little. Turn me on. Turn me on. Yes. Because we listened to a lot of like reggae dance hall. Wayne Wonder. Wayne Wonder. Oh, No Letting Go. No Letting Go. Yeah, that was my shit. I was just playing. Get the fuck out of here. I swear. I'm going to play. All that oh, when I get off, yeah. I swear. Are you saying? Yeah, are you gonna uh, play it on the public? <laughs> Why are you going? To no, I swear. I would just it came up. No, on I'm sure. Before, uh, came on, but, uh, yeah, no. When, where I grew up, we listened to a lot of um, reggae dance hall music. So like Kevin Little, um, Beanie Man, stuff like that. And then we had a lot Elephant of reggae man. Elephant Man, what? Uh, we had a lot of reggaeton too, because I mean, where I grew up, it was a lot of Puerto Ricans, Salvadorians, and um, Black people. Um, so it, like it was very culturally diverse. What part of New York are you from? Uh, Long Island, Central Long Island. Island, Brentwood, yeah. and Central Island. So um, I was there uh, four years ago. In Long Island? Long Island, yeah. Oh, don't you love it? Beautiful city, man. Be- I didn't yeah. get to go to Coney Island. I, would want to uh, I haven't been to Coney Island. I want to I know. go there, but no. They, Long Listen. Island to me reminded me kind of like Waco a little bit. Um, yeah. Well, the part where I was at. Where were you? Do you remember what town you were in? I have to check my snap. They I say the more east in Long Island you go, the more bougier it gets. No, and where I'm from, bougier. it was contrary to believe, because my friends don't believe, like where I grew up, it was a little rough. Yeah. Back in the day, it was very rough. Like we had gang issues and stuff like that. But um, not when, when I took them <laughs> like <laughs> last year, they're like, this is not what you described. And it looks nicer. Like my friends on the comments, you got to let me know, centralize what's going on. But where, where I was growing up, Reed Middle School, like we, it was a little you know rough yeah. around the edges. But I, I always remember the music. Like, that was always my thing. Like, school dances were the shit. You know what I mean? And Tempted to Touch was our jam. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. You know, and that so, was what, back in 03, 04? Um, 04, yeah, 04, 05? I was in high school when I heard that song. Yeah, because um, yeah. then Gasolina was really yep. crunk too. <clears throat> That's over really by Daddy the one song that took reggaeton. Yeah, the Gasolina took reggaeton, like, yeah. To the top. And when I moved to Waco, reggaeton wasn't really a thing back yeah. in 2005 and 2006. And it was, I really wouldn't say up until, like, recently, maybe, like, just some years ago. I want to say maybe three, whenever Ozuna started coming out. Okay, and, yeah. Uh, because uh, we barely we barely got Latino ninety three five yeah 
and that was oh, only really? just oh, some, that's right. that was yeah, only yeah, some yeah, years yeah. ago that wasn't yeah. a very long time no, ago i, I mean because i've been working in that for that station or in that you know company for five years so it's probably only been about three or four years to be honest yeah right if that but anyway yeah um so i totally relate with you and that's why i love your mixes so much so are you gonna make some more yeah i'm actually them? working right now okay. on a reggaeton mix Ooh. <clears throat> old school reggaeton and new school reggaeton i want to do like i don't one? know if i'm going to do a little bit of both or yeah. just do one straight old school yeah and one of new one remember just, la factoria yeah remember Perdona yeah. i actually got i can sing bitches what's up what's up on here. i have a throwback a of, do you have apple music yeah i'm gonna send you my throwbacks espanol i'll show you, um, playlist. I'll show yes. my playlist with you but yeah. i got a bunch of old school reggaeton mm -hmm. And I don't know if I want to do just straight up old school. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have asked me, like, man, just make it old school. Like, just no. Hector Bambino and uh, uh, Daddy Yankee. Yeah. Old school. Uh, Angeli Chris. <coughs> yeah. Angeli yeah. Chris. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Wisin Yandere. My, oh, Wisin Yandere. Yes. You can't leave um, Rakata off of there. Oh, Rakata. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, that was the jam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. How come nobody liked Ed Everday except for me? <laughs> I love oh, Ed Everday. Like they were more like pop, but yeah, they have they have a couple reggaeton songs actually. I had a crush on that girl, Anai. Which, Anai, yeah, she was yeah, the fine one. Yeah. She no, was. That's where my sister got her name from. Anai. La oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, okay. My cousin told my mom, she's like, "Why don't you name her Laura?" Because she didn't yeah. want to pick for a middle name. Yeah. And she liked that girl from I don't know if she was in a group back then, but yeah, <laughs> she was actually in the novela. At a, Rebelde, right? Or was it a different? Re no, it novela. was a different one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, she was like, "Yeah, Anai," and just, I, I like that yeah, name. So nobody knows about Anai. And then. Christian, or I think that was his name. Christian, the one with the pink hair. Yeah. He, um, I thought he was cute back in the day. Now he's actually gay. And so, but yeah, I, I thought everybody thought he was gay too. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck ever. But yeah, I used to listen to every day. I know that's a little different from the reggaeton genre, but they do have a couple of reggaeton songs that are fire as well. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna you're working on a reggaeton mix. Have you ever heard of freestyle? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like on, George man. Lamont, Lisa 86. Lisa. What? Oh my God. Yeah. We in New York. Everybody listen to freestyle yeah. too. So you need to listen to freestyle. That's one. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people were like, man. I had a mix with, uh, well, back then, I can't find it. I, I, I don't know why I left it there, but I had a, free, a freestyle mix. Yeah. And my older friends that were in their 40s, they're like, man, I'll take me back to New York, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I am I need to get some more music. You know my favorite singer in the entire world and who I want to get on the podcast so bad. You already know Frankie who I'm talking about. Frankie fucking <laughs> J. You're coming, right? He uh, And I messaged him. <laughs> I actually uh, know somebody that knows him. Okay, can you tell him to give yeah, me his number? I'll, 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 okay. No, <laughs> well, no, bro. No, I'm Louis singer. Uh, he's saddled for I, Listen, I will fly Frankie J he's out best here. with Frankie J. Is he? Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk after this. I yeah. will fly him out here, get him hotel. He's got to come on the podcast. But he has a few freestyle songs out, too. He, uh, does? he does. You have to check him out. He it came out a few years ago. Um, he has one with Stevie B. He has one with George Lamont, and then he has oh, one solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he does. And that. dumb hoes go. I wanted him to make I a whole freestyle that. album, and it was so great because he. Um, I know one of his musical influences were in freestyle as yeah. well. Because I'm a big Frankie J fan. Yeah. So Frankie J, um, can you come to the public affair, please? I, I'm not gonna. Okay, <laughs> we met that one time at your concert. Anyway, <laughs> so all right, so um, Monstar. Before we wrap up. I, I really want to thank you for coming on and being hey. so fluid. I really want to thank you for being vulnerable and telling, you know, like everything that happened in your family, um, your life as a DJ. What's next for you, man? Next for me. So, because I want to keep expanding my, my DJ brand. So, yeah. I'm working on a clothing line. Ooh, really? Yeah. How fun. <clears throat> I want to have a clothing line. Uh, working on some more mixes. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, because of the pandemic, the gigs are real limited. Okay. Bars, I was say, yeah. So, and I'm only doing... Weddings, private events, but I'm already, thank God, man, I'm already booked up for almost half of the year next year. Oh, good. <coughs> okay, good. And, uh, Hopefully all this shit will go away so you can get that only money. God knows, man. But like yeah. I said, I'm, I'm trying to expand my, my, my DJ brand and uh, I'm working on t-shirts yeah. stuff like that you know just to spread my name and uh you know as soon as you get a t-shirt i'm buying yeah man no, yeah, i got you for free yeah. man for free for you it's free for I, I wear a medium for, i was gonna say for dj yeah. <laughs> for andrew g yeah i appreciate you, man. that okay i appreciate the support and thanks for having me man. i really feel oh honored. my god i am so happy that you came and again it was last minute yeah. um so we're working on some mixes you're gonna keep djing you got a clothing line coming out um it sounds like you're doing some really good things i'm very proud of you Thanks, man. Um, I know that you've I'm been proud through. Proud of you, man. Your thing is blowing up. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, Sid and Marcus, man. I keep seeing the views. I keep going. Oh my god, let up. me tell you something. Everybody says that they love the Sid and Marcus episode. Now, all the episodes, thankfully, thank God, have all gotten really good reception. But everybody says that that's like the funniest one. 
Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Kutis. Kutis was fun. Kutis was fun. English like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was fun to watch, but, man. I actually uh, bought my uh, truck from Apple Sport where he works. Oh, really? Oh, I remember I seeing you there. there. I, saw, I don't think oh, he's there. Oh, yeah, you were there. I saw you there. Yeah, because I remember how much you told me that you were paying for that motherfucking truck. Yeah, we always run into each other. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, I appreciate everybody that has come on the public affair. Adrian Fajardo was actually one of the most impactful ones that I've had. I really feel his. Yeah. <clears throat> when he came on, I could oh, relate to a lot of stuff that he was talking Adrian about. Adrian Fajardo was so, I, I tell him, like, I love everybody that has come on to the public affair. Um, you know, everybody from my first guest on, but Adrian Fajardo, he was the one that was, like, really impactful to me. And yeah. I so appreciate him coming on. Like, and I didn't know him for a shit. <clears throat> That's the hard but, thing about doing a podcast, you know, yeah. is just showing emotion in public. Yeah. Showing, well, and, and that's what I tell everybody before the show starts. Like, I called you. I call yeah. everybody. Like, what don't you want to talk about? What yeah. don't you want me to do? What don't you want to joke about? But the rules of this podcast and why I'm so happy that it's so freeing for me um, as opposed to radio is because we can be ourselves. We can be fluid. We can say what we want. We could say words like pussy and fuck. And, and you know, <laughs> we can say, and we can like talk about what I ain't we want. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to say that, but I said it. Okay. So, you know they're going to watch it. I know. Okay. Sorry, kids. But anyway, but you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> but the pussy cat, yeah, and um, yeah, fudge, 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 and so yeah, so but no, the the best part about podcast is that we can just be free, and I needed to be let out my shell even more. So everybody that has been a part of the public affair, everything down to the sponsors, everything down to the guests that I've had, the people coming on, and the people that have got book coming on, and people like you, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Own different little spices on it, man. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> you got little different spices on it. I, I'm trying. Everybody, you know, everybody's been telling me. I mean, soon enough, you're going to have that perfect blend. Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm trying I'm trying to be diverse well, as it, far as guest listeners. It's growing stuff. fast. Yeah. I'll tell you that. It's growing really, yeah. really fast. Hey, is she calling? <laughs> yeah. Laura, uh, Laura, oh my God, not Laura. <laughs> Laura's your sister. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> Jessica, he's coming home. Okay, so anyway, listen, um, Monstar, Gar uh, Jose, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, um, yeah, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, of course. Before we let go, uh, before we head out, of course, I want to give a shout out to a couple more of our sponsors. Um, SNI Landscaping, Luis Valenzuela, they're a local landscaping company that specializes in lawn care, tree trimming, tree removal, concrete work, and more. Um, they sell trees and flowers, and they also sell um, plants at the local flea market. Uh, gate number 132. I just bought some plants from them. Super duper gorgeous. Go on the Public Affair Facebook page and check them out. And of course, we got to give a shout out to one of our other sponsors, Elite Barbershop, Sid Rodriguez and Marcus Guerrero. Now, Monstar and Ooh. I both get our haircuts out there. Yep. And that's why we're both smoking hot, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, they also got a new barber out there, Chris, out there doing his do? thing. Yes, they okay. do. Chris is over there um, making everybody look hot too. Um, Sid cuts my hair. Marcus is bomb. Chris is bomb. Um, they're located on Hewitt Drive. Um, you can call them on the number on the screen to book your hair appointment or download the Cut app and book your appointment like that. That's how I do it. Um, everybody, thank you so much for all your support of the public affair. All my sponsors, everybody that reaches out to want to help support this project, I appreciate you all so much. Everybody who tunes in, everybody who views, everybody that comments, shares, you guys are the best. It means a lot to me, and I can't say thank you enough or louder to tell you how thankful I am. Uh, Monstar. Thank you so much again for coming on to the man, public man, affair. You're man. the best. The um, everybody who tunes into the public affair, Waco, New York, Florida, California, Vegas. Everybody around the world, because it's, it's gone nationwide. Yeah, um, it's gonna get bigger. Thank you. I appreciate. It. Let's let's hope so. I, no, you I, gotta I, proclaim, man. Claim it. I'm it. <laughs> okay. It's gonna get bigger. Um, I'm gonna take the public affair places. Let's do that. It's gonna go far. I'm gonna take it's it places. Um, everybody who tunes in, always remember, darling, keep it between us.